Hello, long time no see. So I have this snake. Her name is Athena. Athena is a Baron's racer and she's a very sweet and beautiful snake to me. She's very high energy. She's kind of curious, which part of those things make her a little bit difficult to hang out with sometimes, but it doesn't matter. I still love her all the same, love her for all of her glory and her beauty. But the thing about Athena is for the past couple years, she's had these pretty persistent health issues that cause her to sort of lose balance. And that's been pretty concerning. And after some pretty consistent vet trips over the past few years and a lot of money, we've determined that it's either some sort of neurological issue or bacterial infection. <laughs> And both of those are certainly cause for alarm, but at the present moment, she seems to be doing okay. She takes food, she drinks water, she's active. She's just a little, you know, about it. And you know, it's fine, like it's okay, it's, it's fine, I still love Now, a, a while ago, I made a video where I got her a new cage and I did this whole extravagant like home upgrade for her and I did research. And I think that video is pretty good. Uh, I was watching it the other day, expecting myself to cringe at it, but I thought it's actually pretty funny. I was thinking like, hey, I'm just like Serpent Design, except I shop at PetSmart and Michael's and I'm worse. The thing I did kind of cringe at though, and I'm, I wanna give myself a little bit of grace here, is I don't think the cage is actually very good. <laughs> it's a good size for her. It gave her plenty of places to climb and bask. In my opinion, as of presently, it's kind of an eyesore. I don't know, when you really zoom back, just, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't look great. And it's not really working for her the way I want it to. In the past couple years of me not making YouTube videos, I've been consuming a lot of reptile content. Specifically, I've been watching a lot of Serpa Designs videos. I'm sure many of you have probably watched or heard of him. Tanner, Serpa, Serpa Design guy. He's great and I really love his videos. I think I, I sort of internalized three primary takeaways. Number one, he's an incredible artist who has a great eye uh, and attention to detail. Two, he's very knowledgeable and very generous about sharing his knowledge. So if you watch a lot of his videos, yeah, you can marvel at like the great artistry that he puts into his terrariums, but you can also learn a lot and practically apply it to you know, your own animals. And number three, and I think most prominently and most importantly, is he has this philosophy towards pet keeping that he very, very strongly and openly advocates for that I think is really wonderful and most other pet keepers should internalize. Taking what I learned from observation and combining it with research and my abilities allows me to constantly level up. And although I don't want to keep redoing things, the reality is that I just keep learning, which means that I can continue to do better. In my opinion, this helps me stay connected to my animals. Sure, it's exciting to occasionally get new ones, but I think it's even more rewarding to give the animals I have the best conditions possible. I've been keeping pets for over a decade, and I think every step of the way I've really thought that I was taking care of them the best that I could, and I earnestly do believe that, but the fact of the matter is, is that in that decade plus, I've learned just so much about animals, especially in the last two years, that the current standard of living for Athena and a lot of my other reptiles, it's just not up to par with the knowledge that I already possess. So after watching a lot of Tanner's videos, I really wanted to challenge myself creatively. And so naturally that meant giving Athena a big TLC style home renovation that I would be really proud of and that she would be really comfortable in. I have two primary goals. One, I want to make a beautiful, aesthetically pleasing cage that does a decent job at reflecting the natural environments that Barron's racers come from. Two, I wanna create a bioactive enclosure in which there's a cleanup crew and living plants uh, so that it gives Athena a better quality of life and that I can better take care of her waste. So I wanna show you a few things in this video to sort of how I came to making her awesome new bioactive home. One, I'll show you how I prepped and got everything ready. Two, I'll show you myself building it. And then three, we'll do a little bit of reflection and review and see if I really accomplish my goals. You can see Athena in her upside down glory. The last time I did Athena's cage, I feel like I didn't really have a lot of good information about her natural habitat. I did, however, make the discovery that despite being a very long and green snake from South America, Athena is not actually from the tropical rainforest. She's actually from these savanna habitats in South America called Cerrados, which is very much not like a tropical rainforest. But I made that discovery and then I was having some trouble finding some really good pictures um, to actually show what they looked like in their native habitat. Wow, that's it. That's... <laughs> There's literally just 
one page of Google Images. Since then, one of my students actually gave me a recommendation to use iNaturalist, which for those of you who aren't familiar, is like an app on your phone that's like location-based, where you can basically just take pictures of any sort of native wildlife, and then other users who use the app can identify it for you, or you can identify it for them. So what I did is I went into iNaturalist, I geo-targeted myself over down to South America. I did a little search for Barons Racers, and then I sort of just browsed around to see what sort of photographs uh, other people had taken of Barons Racers in their natural habitats. Particularly these three photos, this one shows a Barons Racer up high in like this giant prickly pear cactus, which are not native to South America. <laughs> Um, they do like to climb kind of high uh, in order to seek out like good basking spots and I guess maybe they just feel comfortable or perhaps it's just like their hobby. Uh, this other picture I like because it's a Baron's Racer kind of slithering around on the ground and like the super twiggy floor was, I don't know, I just thought that that was like a really, really cool look and would probably give like the snakes uh, good like opportunities to hide because they can kind of duck in and out of like the sticks and stuff like that and just give them lots of different surfaces to traverse over. Um, the other one was this one of another Baron's Racer in a tree. Same thing as the cactus photo, um, but I just like this tree. It's like a thicker trunk tree with smaller foliage. Um, and then the rest of these photos, you can just really get a sense of the fact that these animals live in a pretty arid environment, and I think that the tank that I make should reflect that. We'll come back to the inspiration pictures later. At the time being, I just banked them in the back of my mind. I needed to take her cage apart and get her somewhere new. I'm gonna salvage pretty much all the branches. Uh, I think I only end up using one of them, but still the rest of them can be used in other cages that I build down the road. The rest of the decor is either getting donated, trashed, or cleaned and stored away. The substrate, uh, that's just, that's gotta go. Also essential is to break just a little bit of the glass on your way out. Then I remove the cage and I vacuum the space underneath it, got rid of all the dust and dirt that's been collecting over the past two years. Then I went ahead and set her up in a little snake hotel. It's imperfect, but it's also impermanent, just like us. Gave her a little drink and then it was time to clean the cage. So first I sprayed everything down and then naturally I got busy with school and didn't touch it for a few days and left it in the rain overnight. So then I decided to dump all the water out all over my patio. That was a mistake. Then you scrub all the excess dirt away, hit it with the bleach water solution to kill any excess bacteria that might be lingering. And then it was time for me to sort of select my plants and get them all prepped out. I, I really couldn't use anything tropical. A lot of the standard plants that are used in bioactive vivariums, like pothos, calathea, syngonium, and even ferns, were all things that I had to rule out of the equation just because it probably look, wouldn't look very great if you see just this desert habitat with all these tropical lush plants flourishing. I wanted to incorporate some grasses that I could grow indoors. I wanted one very large tree or some sort of other large plant for her to climb on and just sort of be this big like, whoa, like piece inside the terrarium. Um, and then I also wanted to use like a handful of succulents. I've been keeping house plants for about a year and a half and I haven't really had much luck with succulents nor do I really have particular affection for them sorry. So I started with some Carex grasses that I got at Home Depot as well as some elephant bush clippings that I took from a previous enclosure. Then I started collecting sticks basically wherever I was. If I saw a cool stick on the road, I'd pull over and grab it. If I saw some at school or at work, I'd pull over and grab them. There's a pile of other sticks. Like, look at my car. Like, anyone, like, I'm completely f Like, people are less inclined to break into your car if they, if you have just, like, wood and, like, twigs everywhere in the back of your seat. And I wanted as many stick varieties as possible because one, having lots of sticks is cool because sticks are awesome. Um, but two, I really like that twiggy picture and I want the twiggy vibe. So obviously you need a lot of twigs and sticks for that. Anyways, I grabbed a lot as far as nature stuff was concerned and then it was time for me to actually start working on the cage. So I wanted to do like the sandy side of like a hill um, or just like some uneven terrain with perhaps some dried out or even dead tree roots jutting out from the side of it with just some plants plants growing just beneath the plateau. And in order to do that, right, I would need to create this custom sculpted foam background made of silicone and expanding foam. Puck to a uh, scape on that thing. This is so stupid. So I hit the back with silicone, let it dry. Um, but before I begin to foam the background, I want to get a lot of the branches uh, stuck in place or at least visualize where they're gonna go before I start adding them into the cage. 
Also, this is my giant Le Lego Brachiosaurus that I love so much and I'm super proud of. <laughs> So after I taped everything in place, I started foaming the background. The foam gets sprayed on and for the most part, just adheres to the back of the cage. And I mean, as you'll see soon, it's way more efficient for me to just lay the cage down on its back and let gravity do the work. But I think at the time I was just like, oh, I like already moved it in here and it was like exhausting and I hurt my back and I don't want to move it again. So eh, I'm going to be lazy. Yeah, th that was a wrong decision. Like don't be lazy when it comes to this kind of stuff. So when you work with expanding foam, it, it comes out like gooey foam, but it dries like hard plastic. So it'll do a really good job of holding those branches in place so that I don't have to look at this ugly blue tape all the time. Also, are you ready for this big ass tree? I don't think you're ready. Boom, there it is, big ass tree. This is a banyan tree, it's from India, not South America, but I think it kind of matched the vibe that I was going for. I cut the top off and tried to propagate some cuttings. Spoiler, I think I only got one. Once I decided I was happy with the position that the tree was in, I removed it from the cage and stuck it under a grow light just to kind of sit there while I prepare the rest of it. Now I'm adding these tall, thin pots to the background so that I could go ahead and plant some of that Carax grass inside of the background of the terrarium, which I think will make it a little bit more busy and will make the background look a little bit more depthful. So I foam around them, fix them in place. I'm foaming in these little shapes because I saw a TikToker do it and I like the way that they did it and it seems more efficient. I let it cure overnight. Now it's good. I threw some twigs in the foam as it was curing just to add some texture. Uh, in the final product, they're mostly obscured and kind of unnoticed, but I mean, I had some ideas. Then I did my best to carve out a lot of the bubbly surfaces so it looked less like expanding foam and a little bit more like rock. The knife I was using is extremely dull, so next time I do a tank, I'll probably use a sharper one. So then I decided to hit with silicone. And this is like a fairly standard practice when it comes to like custom made terrariums, bioactive or not. Um, basically you coat the entire background with silicone and then throw a bunch of sand or cocoa fiber or other dry thing of choice on it. It'll adhere to the silicone and then you knock off the excess and it'll give the appearance that this is like a sandy or dirt-esque hill side or, you know, surface. Essential part also is clean up your mess because you're doing this in your sister's room while she's away staying somewhere for the weekend. And then now it's time to do the actual real fun part of the scape. So I placed the tree and the grass into the cage just so they could get used to growing under the grow light that I bought. Well, fun fact for those of you that like keeping house plants, um, plants undergo like light shock when you take them home from the nursery because they're very used to growing under specific lighting conditions. So when you move them from one particular vein of sunlight to another form of sunlight or move it from sunlight to a grow light, like the plants are going to need some adjustment period before you repot them into new soil or before they even start growing and are being healthy. So this is kind of what that is for them. After I got them in there, it's time for substrate. So what I decided to go for is some leftover topsoil that I had from another cage that I was making. I did a little bit of play sand um, and some coconut core as well. And the goal with that was to make like a substrate that's gonna retain a little bit of water but isn't gonna get too logged up. Cause in a bioactive vivarium, like you're growing live plants in the soil and you need to water those plants. But that excess water, if it doesn't get sucked up by the roots, it has nowhere to go. So that means that it just sits at the bottom of the dirt. It gets moldy, it gets stinky, it gets wet. You can mess with the plants and then your life is over and you have to flee the country. So what most good bioactive terrariums have is a drainage layer. And this is basically just like a protected layer in the substrate that allows water to drain into it, but that doesn't mix with the substrate. I had some pea pebbles in my backyard. I decided to use them in real time. You can watch me react to how heavy they are and how I maybe shouldn't be putting all that in a glass terrarium that's sitting on top of another wood terrarium. Um, so I decided to go for something a little bit lighter and I got lava rock. Lava rock is cool because it's porous and it's much, much lighter than pea pebbles. Also, it just occurred to me that I didn't explain what bioactive vivariums are, so I'll just be very brief about that. So the idea with bioactive vivariums is you create an environment that's as similar to nature as possible, where you have substrate, you grow plants in the substrate, and then when plant leaves die or your animal poops, you have bugs or a cleanup crew in the soil that can come, you know, eat the dead leaves, eat the animal's poop, and then in turn, fertilize the soil as a result of them kind of breaking down the organic material. It's bioactive. Anyway, above the drainage layer, I'm adding a weed barrier. We use this to ensure that the substrate doesn't fall into the drainage layer and get all soggy and prevent 
actual drainage. After I got it, I added my substrate, which is a mix of cocoa fiber, leftover topsoil from a previous project, uh, and sand. Um, I can talk a little bit more about the substrate later in this video, though. I wanted something that was going to be sandy and kind of arid looking. After I put the substrate in, I added more large pieces to stage it and just get a feel for what it was going to look like. After I let it sit for a while, I took the tree out and I put it into a smaller, more inconspicuous pot. And what's cool here is in the time that it was sitting in the soil, you can see that the roots were actually growing out of the pot searching for moisture. I just, I don't know, I just think that's cool. The main plants I'm working with are these carex grasses and elephant bushes. So I stripped them down to the roots so they can really take hold in the soil. Um, I'm making this cool little rocky area in the corner just to mix up the landscape a little bit. Then I started adding the big pieces back in. Um, just for fun, I tried subbing out one of the original branches that I played with um, with this one that was a little bit more twisty. Tried a bunch of different positions, but it really just didn't look right and I don't think it would have been very usable for Athena. I call this branch the problem branch because it gave me lots of problems. I also added in these fake air plants because I had them laying around and they look pretty nice. Then I took a look at the soil and saw that the banyan tree and the elephant bush that I put in had all already began to grow roots. Then it was time for me to boil the twigs and leaf litter that I was gonna use to cover the floor of Athena's cage. The reason why I boiled them is because I collected them all entirely from outside. And this is like a party. Unwanted guests are not gonna be accepted you know in here? here. You can't come in here. Once they dried off, it was time for me to start adding them into the cage. Uh, I wanted just like a good layer of leaf litter to cover pretty much the entirety of the soil. You can also see me adding lots of twigs around here to this brown pot because because even though it blends in a little bit more with the cage in the previous one, it still kind of sticks out. So I want to cover it up as much as possible just to maintain that naturalism. I'm really being kind of liberal with the uh, sticks here because I really, really like that twiggy look and to me, the busier it is, the cooler it looks. Here I am again trying to make this problem branch work. I wish I could just tell my past self to give up and uh, you know, cut my losses with it. Once I finished all that, I gave the plants a drink, broke some more glass, and now it's time for the cleanup crew. I'm outside now. So Athena's gonna have a few roommates. For right now, I've added powder orange isopods. Uh, these little guys are gonna walk around the cage, bury in the dirt. Um, they'll eat any dead leaves from the plants, and they'll also snack on her poop. Freaky ass bugs. Uh, I also added some springtails. They're basically there to do the same job on a smaller scale. They'll help clean up some mold. Interestingly, in between adding the springtails to the video and recording this, I started culturing my own springtails. So I ended up adding just some of my own. But after adding the bugs, the cage was basically done. And here it is. <laughs> someone perhaps a wizard a warlock perhaps in traffic i let the cage sit for a week just to kind of grow in and after that week lo and behold a thousand gnats there were gnats literally everywhere all over the cage coming up through the soil infesting all the plants and i'd have to vacuum them out of my window every single night and it was i mean it was awful i i hated it so much and i really don't have that much footage because it sucked and i hated it and it literally delayed my progress on this cage like a month and a half's time these gnats that came about are fungus gnats you've probably ran into them before if you've kept house plants or you live anywhere really i think that they're kind of a universal pest they don't really do anything to the cage like they're not parasitic they don't bite the snake they don't kill the cleanup they just infest soil that is overly damp and has fungus growing in it and they just reproduce like crazy and i think they were put on god's green earth to annoy me and me specifically so i deployed some anti-nap measures i tried three main remedies before i ended up just redoing the substrate first i watered the cage with bti which is a bacteria that kills fungus gnat larvae second I got beneficial nematodes, put them in the soil so that they might hunt down and kill the gnat larvae so they could stop their life cycle. Uh, and then lastly, I used those like sticky yellow gnat traps, which were very, very effective at catching the gnats. I, I really need you guys to understand how disgusting and pervasive of, an, of a gnat problem this was. Just look at the sheer volume of gnats that are peppering, not even peppering, fully crusting these sticky traps. It was disgusting. Truly pestilence on earth. 
So while I was waiting to fix this, I finished school, went on vacation, and here I go trying again. Which deal should I act on? It's been like months or at least a month since I've meaningfully worked on this cage and it just needs to get done because I want Athena to have a cool home. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna replace all the substrate or most of the substrate, um, finish off the decor, put in a few plants and then I'm just, I'm gonna be done. I'm, I'm done so after this. So I started by removing all the fly graves. I checked the cleanup crew in the okay, substrate so and it was surprisingly doing well. It's actually, no, the substrate is actually kind of teeming. And like we got all this movement. Like that's, that's a good thing. Then I removed the decor and thought it would be a good idea to add some more substrate because at the time I thought that the fungus gnats were caused by a lack of drainage in the soil. So I threw in some orchid bark for organics to decompose and for drainage and aeration. Mixed some leaf litter in there, gave it a little light shower, more sand, cocoa fiber, mix it up, moss it up, give it a shower. Then it's time to start adding stuff back again, finally. I'm adding more leaf litter, and while editing this, I'm getting really frustrated over the autofocus feature on my camera. Also, this is root inoculant so that the plants take to the substrate a little bit better. And this plant that I'm adding here is a Tradescantia spathica. Tradescantia spathacea. Put some more elephant bush in there, gave him a little sip of water. I also added this super thick branch that I pulled out of my neighbor's garbage and then brought in this new branch that I got while hiking in San Bernardino. I think it adds some good variety. Added a hide for the isopods. I also added this little pine cone too that I got walking with my dog. Continued twigging and adding the finishing touches. And then I think we're done again. So then I added Athena back and let her explore. Okay, so when I ask myself the question, was this project a success? My answer is kind of? And I don't think that's me being too hard on myself. Let me explain. So from a looks perspective, I am very, very happy with this cage with a couple caveats. The first is that I, I'm a little bit bitter that I didn't use a prickly pear cactus, like the one in that photo instead of the banyan tree that I used. But good news is, is the banyan tree is actually doing really well. After I chopped it, it developed these two very long sprouts that have just started crawling throughout the cage, which I think make it look really cool and intriguing. And clearly the plant is doing well. So props to me for that, good job. All the grass died, which was unfortunate, but I left all the corpses in, which actually looks pretty cool. Like it kind of accentuates that more like arid look. The elephant bushes as well have done pretty good with the exception of the one that Athena basically trampled to death and now just looks like another stick that I added in. I do kind of wish I added a little bit more intrigue or detail to the background. Um, Cause right now it's like, it does just kind of look like that dirt sandy kind of 
wall, like wall, like, like it looks the way I intended it to. I wish I had spent more time carving it because there's some sections in there where you can tell it just kind of looks like expanded foam covered in dirt, but I mostly don't really notice it. The twiggy floor, the branch variety, all of the pieces of hardscape that I ended up picking, I think suit the cage really well. So covered on that front. The leaf litter uh, on the bottom, most of it actually got eaten away, which is a good thing. So it was looking kind of ugly. So I just ended up spursing some more leaves in there and I think it really looks awesome. Does this cage work for Athena though? So in reference to Athena's clumsiness, the cage is not doing the best for her right now. She's got good heat gradient, places to climb. She's just not really using it right now. I have not really seen her attempt to climb up the branches of the cage since I moved her in. In her previous cage, where she had lots of vertical space to climb to, she utilized all of it. And I think that the reason that she was good utilizing that is because she was in that place for years and was very used to it. Floor space is fine, she's just not using the vertical orientation of it so well. She's also trampled most of the plants, like the Tritoscantia that I put in there has just been torn to pieces. Still surviving though. It's kind of cool seeing the broken leaves being slowly devoured by the isopods. I think something about the succulentness of those leaves, the isopods really, really dig on. The cleanup crew has not only survived, but it's done incredibly well. Every time I lift her water bowl, there's tons of springtails. There's all sorts of isopods. Anywhere basically in the substrate that you like pick apart, you'll see signs of life. Really, really cool. It's honestly like very fun throughout the day, like noticing that she poops and not like removing it immediately and then coming back like a couple hours later or even the next day to see it completely swarmed with isopods. And then I'm like, oh, good job boys. All right, I'm gonna remove that poop there. You've done a wonderful service. I do really like throwing in like, let's say dead mealworm carcasses that turn up in my mealworm bin. Um, and then seeing them get swarmed by the isopods and be completely gone the next morning. Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty into like decay and decomposition right now. It's just kind of like one of my hobbies and one of my interests at the moment. So yeah, overall I'd call this a moderate success. I think it looks really good. Um, the fact that it's bioactive and like, you know, hidden poops are gonna get cleaned up. Very large win on that front. And basically like I wanted this cage to be zoo grade or higher, like, something that you could see in like a zoological institution um, and think, hmm, that looks pretty good. And I think I accomplished that and I'm proud of myself for that. Even if at the moment it's not the best fit for uh, Athena as a snake, I'm gonna continue to monitor her over the coming months just to ensure that, you know, this wasn't a total mistake. But that's it, thanks for watching. Shout out to Bonji Nation. I've made the life transition from worker to grad student. And as such, I have very strong processes in place that should allow me to upload once a month on a schedule should I stick to it. Thanks for the love and the hate, I suppose. I'll see you next time for a full room tour. Just not as maybe seamless and natural as I was hoping. Oh,